Not news. There's something very broken in Washington, and it's bad for democracy. But, but this is news, and good news. There is a fix for that something, and it already has bipartisan support. However, before I get to that fix, I'm gonna piss you off with the details. Members of Congress have found a loophole in campaign finance law to get major American corporations to pay for their vacations. And, shocker, they don't want to talk about it. This campaign stuff, I guess we can talk about that later, but uh, there's all kind of oversight, right? Well, so. not on that, really. You, you've spent $50,000 at Park City um, at kind of events. <laughs> Have a good day. We'll come back to that, Congressman, in a minute. But first, a quick primer on my focus today, leadership packs. A little known but widely used mechanism first created in the 70s so that members of Congress could raise money to help other like-minded members. Money equals power in Washington. So if you raise more and you spread the love around, you get more influence. In return, the corporations and lobbyists who donated get more influence too when the lawmakers they funded climb the ranks of House and Senate leadership. More than 90% of congressional members now raise money through leadership PACs. But the rules are so loose that many aren't using them for that original purpose of supporting other members. They're instead using donations to subsidize lavish lifestyles. And in some cases, bury your political priorities under somebody else's. Leadership PACs, in my estimation, are analogous to the dressing on a salad of corruption. It's like organized crime, except it's legalized organized crime. And that's what I'm trying to call attention to. We have legalized corruption in this country. That's Dean Phillips, organized crime expert, salad connoisseur, congressman from Minnesota. And he's one of the few people in DC calling for change on this front. Not just because big corporate checks tend to make elected officials conveniently forget about their campaign promises, but also because leadership PACs in particular tend to consolidate power with party leaders who raise heaps of campaign cash to protect members around election time. How else do you think your member of Congress was able to afford 3,000 little election postcards and dozens of terrible TV ads? We're human beings. You know, when someone does something for you, you're expected to reciprocate. You can debate his claim about politicians being human beings, but there's no debating that keeping a congressional seat can be insanely expensive these days. So Phillips is right that the never-ending pressure to raise funds can make members indebted to and under the influence of party leadership. And that affects you. Frustrated your Democratic rep isn't fighting harder on Medicaid for all? Maybe because leadership hasn't given its blessing. Or maybe your GOP rep hasn't kept the promise to address climate change. Hard to do much on the Republican side without the blessing of Mitch McConnell or Kevin McCarthy. Now, now, I'm not here to tell you everyone in Congress is awful. A lot of them want to do the right thing. In my experience, most of them do. But here's what goes wrong. You can't change the conversations in Washington unless you rise to a leadership position such as committee chair. But those positions are chosen by the heads of the party, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Mitch McConnell, Kevin McCarthy. And you can't rise through leadership unless you pour money into the party machine. But you can't raise a lot of money unless you get the help of leadership. You can't get the help of leadership unless you're a loyal and reliable vote. And you can't be a loyal and reliable vote if you try to change the conversations in Washington. We're stuck on a hamster wheel that isn't serving America well. Former Congressman Chris Shays is a recovering hamster. Members don't try to be totally uh, opposed to things in their own district, but it's not their primary focus anymore. It's doing what the leadership wants because the leadership gave them money. That is really bad. So now you know how the leadership money machine undermines the democratic process. But here's the fun part. After combing through years worth of campaign finance reports, I found dozens of members using leadership PACs for purposes that appear to have little, if anything, to do with leadership, or fundraising, or actual legislating. And even though the Federal Election Commission says these funds are to be used for political purposes only, they don't really enforce it. Which allowed former Rep Dan Lipinski to use his leadership PAC to pay the membership fee at the Congressional Gym at the House of Representatives, Senator Mitt Romney to go shopping at the men's warehouse in Houston, and Senator Rand Paul to send his donors' dollars to a golf instructor in Arizona, as well as the Trump National Golf Club in Virginia. Full disclosure, our attorneys would like me to tell you that those aren't actual photos of Congress members living it up. And I know it may be tempting to dismiss this as petty nitpicking of some expense reports, but this goes far beyond blurring a few lines. Members of Congress are blowing through millions of dollars on luxury lifestyles by completely ignoring the lines. 
A new report from nonpartisan watchdogs Issue 1 and Campaign Legal Center found 43 members of Congress spent less than 25% of their leadership PAC money on political contributions during the 2020 election cycle. Instead, they spent the money on consultants, overhead, and entertainment. One of the few things the FEC actually specifically bans is the use of PAC funds on entertainment, unless the entertainment is part of a specific officeholder or campaign activity. So, as long as you say something's a fundraising expense, there's just currently nothing the FEC can do about it, much to the chagrin of some of their commissioners. I want to see the law more vigorously enforced. I want to see more transparency. Why would you want to allow the insiders to be able to dip into the funds and use it for their own purposes? If a corporation or lobbyist paid directly for a Congress member's weekend trip to a golf course or a ski chalet, it would be illegal. But because the loopholes are so enormous on leadership PACs, it's not. None of this appears to be illegal. Yet none of the aforementioned politicians would comment on this story. Nor would any of these politicians whom Issue 1 and Campaign Legal Center found using just a tiny percentage of their leadership PAC cash on politics. Wisconsin Democrat Gwyn Moore, who disclosed using just 12% of her funds last cycle to support other candidates, but significantly more on travel, plus 15 grand on meals and catering, five grand on food delivery services like Uber Eats, and another nine grand with event companies like Ticketmaster, Live Nation, and StubHub. Former Republican Rep George Holding from North Carolina, who spent just 2% of his donations on political contributions, but about six times as much on travel, and at least 20 grand at exclusive social clubs. That includes an all-men's club in London that bills itself as a home for dynamic, sociable, and hardworking gentlemen. And Pennsylvania Republican Mike Kelly, who reported just 22% of his donations going to political contributions last cycle, but twice as much on travel, including 50 grand alone at a five-star resort in Park City, Utah. His PAC indicated those Utah trips were for fundraising, but disclosed almost no funds raised anywhere near the time of those trips. Kelly wasn't in the mood to talk about it in Washington. Before things start, real fast, can you tell me, do you think there should be reform on leadership PACs, kind of like the Wild West of campaign finance right now? You know, I don't know. That's not, not what I'm thinking about right now. I'm really trying to think about what we're doing. We're going to spend another, what we spent the first two sessions, we're going to spend $870 billion, or pass, vote on $870 billion. That's more what I'm concentrating on right now. This campaign stuff, I guess we can talk about that later, but uh, there's all kind of oversight, right? Well, so, not on that, really. You, you've spent fifty thousand dollars at Park City um, at kind of events. Like <laughs> have a good day. I did have a good day, and even though Kelly didn't have time to think about leadership packs, he did find the time to use his to pay for another trip to Park City this April, and then another trip to an exclusive resort in West Palm Beach as well. Yet again, it doesn't appear like fundraising was a priority on these trips as his leadership pack reported exactly zero contributions within a month of either expenditure. Kind of gives new meaning to the phrase, putting your party first. The good news for those of us who can't personally afford to send members of Congress to Apres ski in the Rockies, but still want our priorities considered in Washington, is that there is a simple fix extend the ban on personal use of campaign funds to leadership PACs. As the FEC commissioner told me, it seems to be a no-brainer, making it harder for members of Congress to turn their power into personal profit. But a bill that would enact that ban went nowhere in the democratically controlled House last year. And that proposal didn't just have liberal supporters like Dean Phillips. It also had one of Donald Trump's biggest backers, Republican Greg Stubbe from Redder Than Roses, Sarasota, sponsoring it as well. For some reason, though, it's just really hard to get people to share those kind of Florida man headlines. Now, this is not unique to one party or the other. It's institutional, it's systemic, and it's got to change. So here we are in a world where half the country doesn't trust the integrity of our elections with a potential fix that would improve the integrity of our elections. The next step is convincing a few more lawmakers to sign on to the bipartisan reform movement. And hey, you've got a representative in Congress plus two in the Senate as well. If you think they should end the personal abuses of leadership packs across the board, it's up to you to let them know. Hey everyone, Noah Pransky here. Thanks for checking out the NBCLX YouTube channel. For more videos, click here. And don't forget to click subscribe to join the NBCLX community.